These evening prayers have been pre-recorded, so will not be up to date with unfolding world events and situations. We take a few moments of quiet to bring before God all those people involved and affected. Praying for peace, for reconciliation and an end to violence, <clears throat> injustice and in humanity. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. Welcome to Evening Prayers on Wednesday the 5th of June 2024. Today we hear the second episode in the story of Ruth and Naomi. They have arrived back in Bethlehem as the har barley harvest is beginning. Ruth chapter 2 verse 1 introduces this episode. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. 
And so we hear the episode episode unfold. Ruth chapter 2, starting at verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favour. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, Who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, She is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting, and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you, and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, Why have I found such favour in your eyes, that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favour in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come over here, have some bread, and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, That man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth her daughter-in-law, It will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvests were finished, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Ruth, a foreigner and a lone young woman, is very vulnerable in the harvest fields, but she is determined to provide what she can for her mother-in-law. They have no one supporting them. They have no income. But under Jewish law, landowners were instructed to leave what the harvesters had missed for foreigners, widows and orphans to glean for their own needs. So Ruth ventures forth and it just so happens 
that she ends up in a field belonging to Boaz. Boaz is a man of principle who upholds the Jewish law. His greeting to the harvesters, the Lord be with you, and their reply, the Lord bless you, make it clear that he is a godly man with a kind spirit. Ruth's presence in the community and her reason for being there have not gone, gone unnoticed and Boaz is keen to do what he can to support her and Naomi and to ensure Ruth's safety. I love that phrase, as it turned out. The storyteller so skillfully reminds us that God is at work in this situation. It shouldn't surprise us that coincidences or God incidences happen to those who are faithful to him. God isn't an absentee landlord. He is active and interested in our lives and in the world. The more we get to know him by spending time with him, the more we trust him, seek his ways, listen to his promptings, and the more we see him at work in our lives and recognise his activity in the situations and lives of those around us. So let us pray. From the prayer handbook for today. Blessed be God's great name to all eternity. Blessed, praised, honoured, exalted, extolled, glorified and adored be the name of the Holy Blessed One. Blessed be God beyond all earthly words and songs of blessing, praise and comfort. Amen. Lord God, thank you that you are alive and active in your creation. We praise you for your greatness, your awesome power, your love and your compassion. Help us to see you at work and to rejoice that you haven't abandoned us. Forgive us when we fail to look for you or to seek your ways preferring to try to do things in our own strength. Give us the desire to deepen our relationship with you, to listen for your voice, to be stirred by the promptings of your Holy Spirit within us and to be part of your story of salvation. Lord, we bring to you those on our hearts and minds at this time. Lord God, we pray for your world and for your children in need. We pray for those living where there is instability, tension and war. We pray for peace and stability, that leaders may seek ways of peace rather than domination and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those living in poverty who don't have enough to eat or clean water to drink, who have no shelter or access to good health care and have little prospect of life improving. We pray for a better distribution of the world's wealth and a desire to see the world's poorest given a fair wage for their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those living with the reality of climate change and for a concerted effort by those who can to make a difference in time. Help us to work for a more sustainable future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering ill health in body, mind or spirit. We pray for healing and wholeness. And we pray for those who work with and for them to have compassion and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the abused and the oppressed, the persecuted and the abandoned. Praying for justice and truth to prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the lonely and the bereaved, praying for comfort, support and friendship in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember before God today the church in Cameroon, Nigeria, and here in the UK, in the Birmingham district. And we draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we finish with Graham Kendrick's song, Teach Me to Dance to the Beat of Your Heart. See you tomorrow. <laughs>